welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 193. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Ro. Hello, all you happy people. How are you doing, man? Doing great, doing great. I think I need to trim my mustache. I'm starting to eat it again. Oh, <laughs> oh wow, that's not cool. Yeah, trim it, man, right? trim it. Uh, that glorious beard is not meant for eating. I'm not talking about the beard, I'm talking about the mustache. You know what's wrong when you're starting to eat along with your sandwiches and tea? Oh, damn, that's not... Proper etiquette, man. Get, get, get it trimmed, get it nice and proper like. Of course, of course. Gotta have it like a gentleman. Indeed. Uh, so anyway, this week is strange. It's strange in the sense of we don't have James. James is at Brony Scott right now. He's having fun. Wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff. This episode is going to be aired when he's going back home. So, yeah, you're going to miss him. But anyway, he's there. He's having fun. If you saw him, I'm guessing you said hi and bought his stuff. So, yay, that's awesome. But hey, it's still fun. It's all good. But anyway, you got to deal with us both. I mean, I could have been to Bernie Scott myself this year, but there was a few things that kind of stepped on my plans. Like a cat on the keyboard. Only not adorable at all. Uh, the budget? Well, not just the budget, just a few other things that were like not supposed, were supposed to happen, but they still didn't happen. I'm extremely even, even more upset than I was before. <laughs> I was supposed, I was supposed to be summoned to like do some things like around this time of the month, and I received no notification, so I'm like, ah, I could have got out those funds, I could have went to Bronies, I could have seen my best pals I've met online in real life for the first time ever. No, that did not happen. Mm, we never ever get my hands on those guys. Well, there's always next year, and I'm sure those guys are going to have a great time. True, true. Hopefully, I'll be able to raise the funds for the next year. Ah, man, your art's good, and people do love to commission you, man. So I'm sure you'll get the extra cash to go to a convention soon enough. If anything, I'll build my own convention with apple cider and apple fritters. But you know what? Forget about the convention. (laughs) Uh, All right, all right, all right. But you know what? It's one of those episodes where it's just us goobers talking about stuff and trying to entertain you on a weekly basis. Uh, but yeah, it's just us goobers trying to entertain you on a weekly basis. <laughs> uh, I do that on a daily basis when I'm live streaming. Ah, uh, true. At least you're drawing. Now it's just the audience listening to us talk. Yeah, we, we need to keep on blabbering. No, no awkward silence. But of course, but of course. So shall we proceed with the news? True that, true that. And in today's news, the MLB 2007 movie has an official release date, announced on November 3rd, 2017. So, yay. 2007 movie on November 3rd, 2017. Yes, that's what I said, right? No? Excuse me, I need to readjust my watch. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, jokes aside, another splendid movie coming our way. But 2017, man, it's like, let's see, if it's now 2000, what what year is it, by the way? I already lost count. (laughs) 2015. This year's 2015. Oh, yeah, that's like, let's see, five plus three minus, uh, yeah, two more years or so. (laughs) Yes, but it's not going to be that bad. It's not going to be that bad. But here's how I look at it. It's going to be two more years. And right now it's, what, 2015, near the end of November. So there's going to be yeah, more or less two more years. And, well, season the season finale is going to be happening next week. Ah, uh, yes. The final episode. Ooh, hoops clenched, guys. Hoops clenched. Yep. And also, after that, we're going to have season six for 2016. Yay, numbers. So after that, we'll have a movie on 2017. So... This movie is going to be uh, distributed by Lionsgate. And I think if we reported back in the days, this movie was done by, what you call this? Allspark Studios, if I remember right? Allspark Studios, I think so. Yeah, maybe. We'll check our notes on that. Yeah, I think so. But according to boxofficemojo.com, the distribution for this movie is going to be done by Lionsgate and is directed by Jason Thiessen. 
and actress. Let's see. They have Emily Blunt and Christine Kensworth to add to the mainstay of actresses and actors that we have. As for now, we got no idea what the movie is going to be about. But hey, if it's going to be done by the same people, we can expect it to be really awesome and not to be a gem movie. <sighs> I thought gems were awesome. No, no, not gem. And... Or they're just outrageous. No, yeah, the, the uh, a really outrageous one, gem and the holograms, that one. You saw what I did there. Well yeah, done. <laughs> yes. Uh, but you heard about that movie, right? Of course, of course, of course. It exploded like another volcano on a deserted island. Things like this just don't pop and just go. They explode. It did worse. It, I, I think it did worse than, uh, what you might call this pixels. At least pixels had a few runs in. Pixels wasn't that bad. It's just that there was, there were more whiners on the internet than there were more like positive reviews. Let's put it that way. I mean, I get, it's not, it was not that bad, but it wasn't that good. I give it a four out of five. Yeah. Wait, four out of five? That's high, oh. Well, personally, it, it was an okay movie. It was all right. I would give it a five I can't out of say, ten. I can't say it was bad, but I can't say it was like super duper awesome. Yeah, I agree with you there. I mean, it's in the middle of the road, like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're not really, I gave it a four out of five because of the giant Pac-Man. <laughs> that was freaking awesome. Uh, okay, if you say so, man. Like uh, four or five, I would just give it a three out of five. I mean, honestly, the five out of ten is just mediocre at best. I mean, you're not missing anything by not watching it. At least it has this run throughout the theaters. For this one, Gem and the Hologram, after two weeks, it bombed. I think it stayed a week in theaters. I don't remember. Isn't that like every movie? Like they stay up for a week and then oh, they just go on no, the no, DVD? No no no, 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 no. Like most movies, uh, their movie theaters are obligated to have your movie or to promote your movie for two weeks. If the theaters say that it's not making any money, they can just strip it and pull it off the listing so nobody will watch it. And if I do remember right, they didn't make that much cash out of the whole thing, so yeah. And from what I heard, well, basically, let's just say this. It's named Gem and the Holograms, but it's not Gem and the Holograms. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's just the name. Yeah. So there's nothing related to the classic Gem and the Hologram. You do remember what the classic Gem and the Hologram is all about, right? Of course, so there were these girls in this orphanage, and there was this really fabulous girl with really fabulous pink fluffy hair singing music. And then there was these gals. <laughs> Kids, ladies, ladies, don't be those gals. Well, Nobody likes those gals. No, no, no. Here's the thing, Ro. I, I find it really funny because I find the Misfits really entertaining. They're diva rock girls like Kiss and whatnot, and they have really bad attitudes because it's kind of the time. And... The gem and the holograms are kind of, you know, those prissy, clean, safe for radio um, girl bands. And you know what? The Misfits songs are much better than gems. <laughs> mm, I can question that statement. It depends on the time, really. It depends on the taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always the taste. True. Some people like that. Some people like this. Huh? Personally, I like the gems. Yeah. Rather than... Those girls, because, uh, well, true. you know. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of musical preference. But hey, that's the classic gem. What we got was a piece of toast. Burnt toast. Burnt toast could be nice. Really burnt, like black all over. Really bitter. Not good. But that's we... not toast, that's coal. Charcoal. <laughs> <laughs> yep, we got that. But hey, I think for the MLP movie, we're safe. Of course we're safe. We got, we got the Hasbro's Sticks it sticks with what was tested and works. They got people that they know will do the job correctly, and they're well keeping them. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, with ponies, it's really, really picky because the fan base are really, really loud. Not as loud as Sonic and Sega. Uh, not gonna comment on that. But for entertainment on a weekly and yearly basis, ponies are fickle. And it's already a plus when we get our the current voice actors 
who does the show to voice the movies because sometimes if we're not lucky we don't get them to the movies you know some kind of other movie things that's been done before but this one we get the recurring actress to come back and reprise the roles so yay Oh, yeah, that's true, that's true. Normally, there's like a huge diff- time difference between like, for example, a TV show, a cartoon show shows up and then so- and then they release a movie like five times later. The voice actors could not be the same and stuff, so they had to look for a new crew. And thus, it kind of like puts a dent to the whole thing that we've seen five years ago and what we're seeing now. Yeah, that was way back when, when everything's not yeah. stable. But now... Now, I think, now we have stability. Mm. So, I I'm calm. Yeah, true. Also, sometimes when movie people, they try to bring in big names. Like, for example, I'm just going to throw out Beyonce, Lady Gaga, maybe, who knows, um, Jay-Z or even Jack Black to, to lend their voice for the show. Just because so they can pull in those people who knows who know who they are. Yet, for this one, the 2017 movie, they stick to their current voice actress because they know the fans... Uh, nuts for the current one we have. So, if they were to change the VAs all of a sudden without any reason, no, oh, we'll scream Bradley murder. Stick with what works. That's what they're doing. True. Why, you know, why fix what's not broken? Why mm-hmm. change something that's been, you know, operational and fine? Mm-hmm. True, true. And you know who's coming back and who's doing music for the show too? Or the movie? Uh, Let's see, and last time I checked, we got Daniel Ingram. Yes. I don't recall anyone else. Well, he's coming to do the song for the movie. So, oh yeah, we got stability, yo. Shall I roll the drum rolls? I don't know, I mean, we got no song to announce. Like, Daniel, we, we got no songs, really. We, all we know is that Daniel Ingram is currently working and producing songs for the movie, for the 2017 movie. And as what we heard... All of their songs are awesome. And if you listen to today's episode, episode number 24, um, the song that he worked on with Lena Hall was really awesome. So, yay, I'm excited to hear what he's going to produce for 2017. His movie, or the movie he's working on. Yay, that's going to be awesome. And Ro, who else is working with him? Like I said, I only know Daniel Ingram. Is there anyone else that we have not talked about or I have not noticed? Well, you know who Stefan Andrew is? Uh, refresh my memory, please. Well, Stefan Andrew is one of the music guys from MLP. He does help uh, Will Anderson and Steph, uh, and Daniel with songs for the show. I, I'm not 100% sure what his role is in the show, but I think doing a quick Google search would well, would suffice and would help us greatly in this endeavor. What does he do? <laughs> well, I found his Twitter and he tweeted, I have no idea how thrilled I am to be working on this. So my guess is he's Daniel's right-hand man, and now he's, like, being partners with him on this movie. Because look at all those emojis, man. <laughs> and on his, well, wiki page, he says that he does... Song orchestrator and composer, additional music, season 1 to season 4. So I'm guessing that, yeah, he just helps around in the background where things are needed. And I'm guessing he does a lot more than that, really. So, yeah, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. We have people who knows what they're doing coming back and, well, doing stuff. So this is going to be awesome. 2017 is going to be one good year for pony movies. Pony movies? I thought we got only one movie confirmed. Is there something else I missed? Well, you have to remember 2016 is going to be the Equestria Girl movie, so... Well, yeah, that's uh, 2016, but you're talking 2017, which is only one movie confirmed, and you're saying movies. Well, okay, strike the S. Movie, yeah. Pony movie. Yeah. I just put it, these next two years are going to be good in pony movies, because 2006 we'll have one movie, and in 2007 we're going to have another. Yeah. True. We, have some, we got something to like entertain ourselves with. Yeah, and also I I hope there's a season seven. Uh, would it be oh, too much to ask? I think maybe I don't know. To be honest, six seasons seems to be like a most reasonable amount of seasons for a TV show. Uh, true. I mean, yeah. Unless I, you still have like cool ideas that can still roll with. 
they could still roll uh, roll out, then yeah, maybe seven season seven maybe a go. But right now, I see season six as like probably the finale because come on, whether they're. I mean, don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong, I appreciate what the writers do, but I noticed they're using a lot of references in the latest episodes, like Bob Ross, for example, everyone knows Bob, and other pop cultures and stuff, and that seems to be like, you know, like South Park, what are they doing now, they've been slapping pop culture, and I'm starting to think that MLP may be doing the same thing right as of now, you know, maybe, I could be wrong, I could be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, don't quote me on that, but just that's what I noticed. Yeah, the difference in production between the two shows are way different because... I know the production, but I'm saying is they're now using just, you know, pop culture references as latest episodes. That seems like... A, well, you have to To remember, me, it seems like they're running low on the idea. Well, department. you have to remember, Ro, that when the, the production in between those two shows are way different because when MLP does a joke about something, it's not to be... Uh, current or topical because, well, they do their stuff one year behind. Like, whatever joke that comes out is, well, timing. As for South Park, they can dish that thing out way fast. Like, if there's something happening this month, they can, well, pull it out quick because of the way they produce the animation. Two totally different things. Uh, oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, I see, I see. I guess, well, if you put it that way, I guess, yes. Yeah. And, well, it's Discord. He's draw, trying to draw a picture. And you could go multiple ways. And one way is to draw Michelangelo or the great Italian Renaissance artist. Or you could go for the obvious one, Bob Ross. Which one would you go? The 90s and 80s kids will know. Yeah. And like I said, timing where Twitch streamed all of his episodes and Wait, what? You don't know? Since when does Twitch stream art? That was official. Uh for his what you call this anniversary, I think his death or something. Twitch TV stream all of his episodes on Twitch. This makes no sense. I don't know. Probably Twitch TV is moving to an art platform. You do know that uh before Twitch TV, it was, um, what you call this, Justin TV or something like that? Nope. Yeah, they were, they, before they moved on to Twitch, uh, they had their parent company, I think Justin TV or something, something like that, I don't remember. But Twitch was kind of a side project for gaming, and that got really popular, and they, well, the child company overtook the parent company, and the parent company shut down, and well, the child company is the big one right now. Go figure. Well, now if they're allowing art, this is just a personal thing. I've just been upset with Twitch, and now this all seems to me like they're going downhill from now on. If they're allowing art, if they're that desperate for audience. Well, they're probably desperate for audience. I'm not sure. I mean, Twitch TV is not going anywhere. Exactly. You have to think about it because a lot of YouTubers do live streams on Twitch. So they're going to go there, and they have their YouTube content to, well, do the edited version of their show. Uh, but anyway, we're running around in circles, we're not giving anything new, so I'm just going to try and do this. Ro, wh- have you been doing anything gaming related? Well, now that you've asked, I've always been... Actually, no. This week, I've been barely gaming, I've just been working on my like, commission queue. Don't, I only had like one game tonight, like had a game of League of Legends. That was pretty much it. <laughs> just grinding for more support characters. Alright, alright. Right. Yeah, they've changed quite a few things there. I I personally got no idea how to play League or what League is all about. All I That's know simple. Is... You take a character. If someone shouts at you, that means you're going the wrong lane. You should go for the other one. If they keep shouting on you, go for the third lane. And if the shouting stops, it means you're in the right place. What if they keep shouting at you? Then there's, there's... It's one of those guys, then. If the shouting doesn't stop, no matter where you go. <laughs> uh, wow. Uh, no, no comment, man. No comment. Also, been following the League of Legends community. There's quite a few fantastic artists and animators out there, and musicians as well. Like, damn, son. Arts all over the place. So, no Fallout Four? <laughs> Please, Tetris. <laughs> what do you mean by Tetris? Fallout Four. Please, too mainstream. All right, all right. Plus, I'm too poor for that. 
Uh, true. That, and I don't know if my computer can actually handle that kind of game. From what I've seen from what my friends played, you need quite a beefy PC to play it for, for even on the lowest settings. Hmm, okay, okay. Well, uh, as for me, I got nothing gaming related. I mean, all my time has been spending on playing Magic the Gathering. So yeah, that's that. Uh, and since no one here plays Magic, so I'm alone. Yay. Likewise, with my, with my League of Legends. Well, at least you have a community on online to play with. I got no one, except James. Excuse and... me. Well, you have the, the online people. I have real life people. And uh, we don't do a show. You see the difference here? Uh... Online, real life. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You're better off in this department. I spend money, you don't. Yes, I do. Oh, wait, really? yeah, you're right, I don't. <laughs> but it comes with a price. <laughs> At least you get to hang out with real people. I'm still stuck here in my dark apartment on every Friday night, all alone in the dark. <laughs> Shit. Did I mention it's dark? <laughs> well, at least you have the live stream people to um, watch you paint and draw and talk to you. Yes, my audience! <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. But yeah, in terms of art, I always got someone to hang out with. In terms of gaming, yeah, forever alone face. Uh, well, you have Kyla and me. We could game. Yeah, but the timing is not always in sync. Sometimes when you guys are having gamers night, I gotta go do some stuff in the back and stuff. Yeah, busy, busy, bang, bang, as my professor said. <laughs> I'm sure we can work something out. We love to game. And probably we like to record a gaming session, you know, for prosperity and upload it to YouTube. <laughs> Oh yeah, I was thinking of rebooting my YouTube channel, but I still have not got around it. I wonder if my subscribers are still with me. I am sure you can do something, man. I'm sure you can do something. Also, you should do speed paint and stuff. You know, record yourself painting. Uh, requires video editing, and I just uh, can't be bothered with that. Uh, if you say so. If you say so. I mean, I could try, and yeah, I still got my 114 subscribers. Yay! No one has not subscribed for me in this entire like duration of this. What? I think it was like one year since I released a video. I mean, I was just looking for the funsies that never had any, like, serious projects for YouTube game, like those big-time YouTubers. <laughs> like, with the video editing, and the subscription, and the t-shirt shops, and the merchandise, and the MLGs, and the Doritos, <laughs> and you know what I'm talking about. I I have 24 subscribers. Yay! Uh, so sad. Oh, but anyway, but anyway, I, I think we're just me babbling right about now. So let's end this, right? It's just another Saturday night. What else can we do on a Saturday night? Especially when everyone's on conventions and out doing stuff. True. Anyway, so let's try and end this quickly and quietly. So if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbshowgmail.com. And you can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at mbshow. Sweetiebot will retweet stuff. Probably and talk about stuff. If you ask for stuff, she'll probably answer. And you can reach me at Norman Senzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. And tickling my fancy now is nothing really. I mean, it's one of those things where it's just a full can of derpiness. Uh, I'm so lonely. What about you, Ro? Well, at least you don't have a harem of waifus like I do. Oh, uh, you, you have those. Uh, I don't. Exactly. Does that, that this does not measure whose forever loneliness level is higher? I think I freaking overlapped you by a mile. No comment yet. Come on. We can do people find you, man. You can find me at Relicious underscore art on my Twitter. I tweet about my beard, art, and web comics. Lots of web comics, good reads. If you're looking for something to read on a lonely Friday night, check out my Twitter. I reblog stuff. <laughs> Or my Tumblr at reliciousart.tumblr.com. Yes, I recreated my Twitter. Or if you want to see other cool artist stuff, reliciousgalleries.tumblr.com is where we reblock cool stuff from videos to music to fan fictions to illustrations for your inspiration. Alrighty then. Hey, bro, what about that project that you're doing? What project? You know, the one featuring the artists and whatnot. Oh, yes, the gallery. I'm working on it. That's what I said. Reliciousgalleries.tumblr.com. That's oh. where we reblog and share arts from tw- from Tumblr and across. So that's called the, so the gallery is called Religious Galleries? That's just, the, that's just the web address. The official name is The Gallery. Ah, alright. So, you guys, or basically you just calling people and just promote them and stuff? Like reblogs and whatnot? Yeah, it's like around the internet. If I see something cool, I will share it all over the place. Yeah. All right. Maybe I should ask you on again to be a guest next time. That'll be cool. Well, if you want to, I'll be more than happy yeah, to give an interview week. point two version. 
We, we never did an interview with you. You never were a guest on the show. Wait a second, what are you talking about? What was that one time? You were a co-host. You remember that one time? No, I was a guest. Really? <laughs> then I, I became a, then the, you promoted me to co-host. No, you weren't, you weren't guest. You were kind of yes, a guest host. Yes, I was. Host. I perfectly remember it was, it was all, it was like yesterday. You, 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 you were looking, you were on James, we were on James' stream yeah, and you were looking for a guest and I volunteered. Guess and then the next day you're asking you me to be your co-host and, and I said yes. I, and we lived I, happily ever after. If I did remember the episode you were on, it was you, Corner, and, uh, I'm derping on names right now. And it you, was after you p- promoted me to co-host. Really? Dang yes. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Oh, well, you know, I need to do research. You don't mark your happy days on the calendar, do you? What happy days, my man? <laughs> my point exactly. Uh, but anyway, uh, fact-checking on this show will lead us to our downfall. But anyway, uh, links are going to be in the show notes for Rose Links. And do check him out. He's really awesome. And, he's, uh, he, and, and, and he is a really awesome dude. And also, and please, I got a beard. Yep, true, and a beard. And also, please us and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. And you also can catch us on com. Please press that subscribe button on the YouTube. Please subscribe to us on iTunes and give us a thumbs up. It also helps us a lot. And, well, give us positive response because we need it. Yay! Uh, these are there in the show notes. So anyway, I have been Roman Sanzo. I am Relicious, Rhymes are Delicious. And we'll see you guys next week with... I want to say amazing, but I'm not 100% sure it will be. <laughs> uh, Roman, take us out. Thank you all so much for listening. Click the subscribe button for more podcasts that we've done. And we'll see you next time. Peace. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.